Okay. So uh, thank you very much for joining my present presentation uh, about how to deliver modern Wi-Fi connectivity for BSD, BSD based firewall VMs. My name is Piotr Krull. Um, and yeah, and I'm a CEO and founder of LPN Plant, as well like founder of other companies that you may know, like 3MDEP. Uh, I'm a core boot contributor and maintainer. Uh, I'm conference speaker and uh, organizer, core organizer, also training some organizations in the past. Um, I, I'm also a former bio software engineer, so I, I'm uh, familiar with low, low level stuff uh, and firmware related stuff. So what's LP, LPM Plant? LPM Plant is a company created in Poland. Uh, it, it goal is to provide wireless connectivity for indus, industrial IoT environments. Uh, we, we do integrations of uh, applications like smart, smart metering, uh, smart lightning. Uh, so typically we deploy some sensors, uh, uh, some IoT stuff. Uh, typically we're trying to use open source uh, Artos like Zephyr um, and also uh, open source stack on the gateway, uh, which typically leverage Coreboot, Zen, Yocto, uh, this kind of technologies. And this presentation will also touch, touch that stuff. Uh, we're adapting Zen and Trenchboot. Um, usually we use open source firmware um, and yeah, so that's our, uh, that's our main stack that we're working with. Uh, so my agenda is as follows. I will start with trying to justify why BSD appliance. I don't know if this needs a, a just justification, but there are probably people that think that Linux is good enough for everything. But uh, there are some BSD use cases that we that definitely it is worth uh, looking for. Uh, What's the problem? Uh, what's the problem with Wi-Fi connectivity in BSD environment? Uh, why not try virtual appliance? So trying to justify why we should use vi virtual appliance for this kind of use cases, or maybe consider using virtual appliance. Um, my proposed software stack and some test results and test environment, which I said, uh, and then finally uh, some ideas for improvements uh, since uh, maybe not everything go uh, as good as we expected. So we have three main BSD uh, systems. Uh, there are, they have different purposes, different needs, but uh, there are, what, what can be reasons for using OpenBSD, FreeBSD or NetBSD or any other BSD? First of all, uh, many people say license, uh, which is, um, which is like, uh, mm, well known from being very permissive, uh, um, not, um, um, very useful for some specific environments where we want to close uh, close our code and kind of do things um, uh, on our own. Uh, some people saying that there are same def defaults for BSD systems. So BSD systems out of the box contain some features enabled. Uh, so some specifically some security features. Uh, some people say there is simplicity. Some people say there is stability, long-term stability. There are many. Um, uh, inter internet service providers that using BSD systems and they uh, use it because of the stability. Uh, also, BSD uh, environment is known from pioneering some uh, some important technologies for a whole operating system eco uh, ecosystem, like OpenSSH, um, write XOR executable technology, ZFS uh, file system, jails or sockets, and. Uh, for, for some people, you uh, claim that uh, BSD is important because it uh, seamlessly continue the Unix path. And of course, uh, there were many organizations which relied on, on Unix. Um, there is also some distributions like OpenBSD have a full disclosure policy, which is sometimes good for the, for the OpenBSD, sometimes not. But there are people that like that and, and because of that, it is worth to use it. Um, and also the network stack of, the, of BSD systems typically is considered like high quality uh, and long-term stable. Uh, in terms of problems uh, that we're trying uh, to solve here, first of all, like regular uh, firewalls or uh, routers that we're buying in, in, uh, in malls uh, are, are insecure. There are many papers, uh, for example, this Fraunhofer paper that I'm pointing here, but there are many more just which proving that whatever you're buying uh, got uh, mostly 2.6 kernel or some old stuff, like no security enabled. Uh, the um, commodity firewalls and routers uh, ecosystem moving very, very slow. And because of that, it is worth to consider 
for small uh, small office home office especially in this time where where uh, home office is very popular to consider building your own firewall building your own routing device and sometimes you even don't want to have separate device for wi-fi uh, that's why uh, maybe your um uh, your self-built firewall contains some mpci slots which you can extend with wi-fi and in that way you could uh, you could leverage that but the problem is when you're going to community and saying, um, I want open source firewall uh, like PFSense or OpenSense with uh, Wi-Fi support, but they saying, ah, Wi-Fi support is not, not excellent. Uh, it's not so, so good, uh, especially the new specification like 802.11 AC um, is not well supported and newer would be even harder. And also PFSense and OpenSense um, firewalls are typically behind uh, like two years behind, one year behind the uh, uh, the FreeBSD on which it's based on. Um, so because of that, they get the newest feature way slower. And what alternative you may have if you will not use OpenSense or PFSense? You may try to use OpenWRT, but it has completely different properties uh, than, uh, than BSD firewalls. Uh, you can uh, go with buying dedicated Wi-Fi device. Of course, this is like simple solution, but not doesn't have to work for everyone. Or you can switch to using like a separate like, external device like USB mod USB modem for Wi-Fi connectivity. Of course, like that would be very easy, but we don't want to go easy path, and we want to have uh, Wi-Fi and um, and firewalling capabilities on one device uh, in one uh, software stack. As I said, BSD slowly adopts uh, recent Wi-Fi technologies. I also try to look why is that. Uh, some answers are that this is because of lack of uh, correct documentation, lack of support from hardware vendors, lack of developers, sometimes very minimal activity, for example, on free BSD wireless uh, mailing list. Uh, they also claim that introducing very fast these new um, standards may cause problems with stability of old stuff. That's why they want to. They don't want to pu push hard uh, things uh, uh, with the, with the new features. Uh, and of course, there are some problems with uh, uh, developers and users uh, value Wi-Fi. Uh, they sometimes say like, "Why well, you need Wi-Fi? Just use Ethernet and uh, forget about Wi-Fi." And as I said, even if you will have Wi-Fi support in the FreeBSD or or like an upstream distribution then you will have problem getting that into the downstream because it's definitely delayed uh, for some time. And in case of some surveys, uh, some numbers, um, if we take uh, most popular hardware from uh, famous Linux hardware database, uh, then we see that FreeBSD supports like a 71% of the wireless devices which are supported on Linux. And of course, Linux do not support everything. Yeah? And OpenBSD is even worse and NetBSD is even worse. Um, so those data coming from uh, BSD hardware um, GitHub. Yeah, so we would like to build environment in which we can leverage both uh, modern uh, Wi-Fi cap capabilities uh, and uh, firewalling capabilities, uh, routing capabilities that OpenSense bringing or PFSense bringing. Because of that, we can leverage uh, virtual machines. And of course, we would like to make it on top of uh, Zen Hy hypervisor. And why it, is, it, is it even worth to use virtual appliance? Um, typically, those virtual appliances are advertised as a cloud solution. So you're buying some virtual machine in major cloud provider uh, and just serving the firewall there. But not this is not what we're talking here. We're talking here about uh, having our own box on, on premise in our uh, home office and then deploying on that box uh, whatever is needed uh, in terms of software stack to enable both uh, capabilities. Uh, so what, what kind of advantage it may have? Uh, of course, we, we have all, we might get all the advantages of the hypervisor, like uh, uh, ability to migrate to new device, uh, those machines, those virtual machines which which working on this. Um, on this appliance, virtual appliance, we have last live patching. Of course, we can disaggregate uh, uh, certain uh, hardware functions. Um, yeah, and thanks to that, we can get improved security and, uh, and reliability. And hopefully, uh, for, for some use cases, it can bring even better performance. 
Uh, we have also some independence from the vendor, from underlying hardware and from underlying um, uh, platform. Uh, but there, there is some limit to that. Uh, there is extensibility because we can add new functions using new virtual machines. Uh, we have uh, reduced development and deployment cost because we can uh, we can easily um, improve those machines uh, without re rebooting whole hardware. We can do the upgrades and so on and so on. Um, and in terms of like building commercial product, it's easier to provide customer support because uh, we have better control over what's going on um, um, in those virtual machines. Uh, instead, if you will, we will run just one OS. Yeah, and this is good for open source software and open source firmware developers uh, since you can quickly roll back whatever you deploy it. So this is this is my stack. Uh, this is proposed stack. We have like some some device which got uh, wireless LAN, which has uh, access to the internet through wide area network, which which has some uh, some local uh, area network LANs. Then we have some ideally open source firmware like Dasharo Secure Firewall, which is based on core boot, but can be based also on other UFI. Uh, then we have Zen. Then we have some DOM zero. Uh, in this case, we're using Dasharo Reference OS. This is a Reference OS built using Yocto. Uh, but also contains some special features uh, like up upgradability, face safe upgradability, um, and various other stuff uh, which uh, which this this OS will deliver. Uh, and then we have two virtual machines. One is Wi-Fi. Um, we wanted to use my minimal Linux, but in all tests that I did, I used OpenWRT because it's like quickest way to to get uh, best Wi-Fi performance. Uh, we also um, using uh, recent version of OpenSense in other virtual machine. So our hardware is just PC Engine's box. I don't. Most of you probably know this is like a um, 100 euro platform. Um, of course, you have to buy disk to that and, and some wiring, the casing, and, and, and other stuff. But it's quite par powerful for its price. It has quad core one gigahertz uh, AMD processor. Uh, it uh, has uh, four four gigabytes of uh, memory. It has uh, three, and there's also version APU four, which has four uh, Intel NICs, uh, and you can buy to it uh, MPCI um, Wi-Fi, for example, uh, Compex uh, W uh, WLE six hundred VX. VX um, which has, which is dual band and you can use uh, five gigahertz uh, to get better performance. It's based on Qualcomm materials. So this is hardware. The firmware is core boot based. As I said, um, uh, it, um, there is possibility to, pro to deploy immutable root of trust through SPI, uh, one time programmable uh, fuses, which give you ability to lock, um, a certain p p uh, part of SPI to have um, um, static root of trust there. Uh, there is also um, work and already working UFI Tiano Core payload support. So the PC engines formerly had only legacy boot. Right now, uh, through the Shadow Secure Firewall, uh, UFI would be possible. Um, you can use verified, verified boot from core boot. So from immutable root of trust, you can use core boot verified boot. Then you can pass control to Uf UFI Tiano Core Payload, which also have, has secure boot capability, and then you can leverage secure boot for booting anything further. Um, and, and I know that Bobby had uh, this presentation um, ab about uh, um, XCPNG using secure boot. Uh, so, of course, Zen can use secure boot and then um, continue chain of trust further on the platform. There is TPM support. Uh, we want to have trench boot support. There's of course, some problems with that, like we have to consider how how to do exit boot services um, and this kind of stuff, but this is not talk about that. And uh, there is also LVFS FWPD coming soon. If you want to read more, you can you can go to docs.com and, and there are more information there. In terms of other components uh, that I use it in, in this um, test and this for this presentation, uh, there was a Zen uh, 4.14.1. Of course, I know I should new, use 4.15, uh, but you know, like there is there are time constraints for preparing everything, and I believe I will update that uh, in the further version of this project. 
Uh, for DOM0, we used uh, something what we call in Dashar reference OS. This is just ecosystem for uh, leveraging Kyocto and building some operating system with various capabilities like uh, dual, dual image update system. So we have image A and image B, and we always, always get some working configuration. Uh, the root file system of DOM0 Do, Do, Do uh, is read only. We use overlay to keep some minimal configuration. And uh, there is persistent, uh, uh, there's partition for persistent data where we're keeping uh, VM images. Um, we use Linux kernel 5.10 in this case. And this is how the reference tense environment look like. Uh, so this is like my, my um, home office network, we can say. So we have, um, uh, from the left side, of course, like we have connectivity, which is provided by uh, LTE advanced modem uh, from Huawei um, and this and I would like to um, separate that through through LPN router somehow uh, in in in, for, in further steps but uh, this is connected to switch switch got server this server will be used for uh, serving iperf uh, 3 performance application so we can test performance in the network of our LPN router. And then we have our LPN router. First reference tests were done with clean OpenWRT just to check what kind of Wi-Fi per performance we can, we can get. And I tried that on phone and laptop. And you can see that we have different dots and lines uh, that describe what kind of connectivity it was. Uh, the OpenWRT that I used for testing was 2102RC1, uh, which used uh, kernel 5.4. Okay, I, I see that this may be not very clear, uh, the top one, but you can see that the reported uh, speed or, or link speed uh, by OpenWRT was uh, 866.7 uh, megabit per second, which is, which is maximum, um, and it used um, eight me 80 megahertz uh, wide uh, channels. Uh, but the transmission is... Uh, to some extent, uh, not so good. For example, for like, okay, this is like, this is reference one and there will be not, not better results further, but um, we're getting like in the one meter from the Wi-Fi router, we're getting like uh, 450 megabits per second when we're using laptop. Um, yeah. And, and there are some people that show in the internet even better res result exactly with the same configuration with the same card. So there is definitely some tweaking possible here and we didn't squeeze the maximum um, in comparison to what was reported uh, by other people. Uh, the problem here is of course, Wi-Fi testing reproducibility is, is hard because it is easy to change. It is easy to change some parameters and not get exactly the same performance as other get. Okay, so um, what was configuration test environment? Uh, what I did, I added the DOM0, which starting two virtual machines, the firewall VM with OpenSense and the Wi-Fi uh, VM with OpenWRT. DOM0 got uh, 512 megabytes of memory. Uh, Wi-Fi VM gets one virtual CPU and, and 512 megabytes uh, memory. And uh, whatever is left, um, it's like two, two gigs around uh, two gig, uh, around three gigs, like 2.6 gig uh, left for firewall VM. And this is, this is what was assigned to it. So first configuration look like, look like that. So I just wanted to check, uh, what, what drop of performance I will get if I will use, uh, just, um, PCI pass through Wi-Fi to the Wi-Fi VM and then, uh, use, uh, bridge in DOM zero, zero to, uh, get connectivity from the Wi-Fi VM to the DOM0. And the results was, was not, uh, not very good, but um, this is probably uh, due to usage of emulated environment instead of para-virtualized uh, interface, emulated interface versus para-virtualized para uh, interface. So um, yeah, we get like 170 from phone and 220 from, from laptop. Um, just for comparison, when we look at uh, connectivity between the server and the uh, Wi-Fi VM itself, uh, not not through uh, wireless connectivity, but from inside the, the VM, 
uh, we're getting like um, 850 mega megabits per second and uh, pure performance from Don Zero is uh, 9, 9, 940, which is quite good utilization. So that means that the problem is between the Dom Zero and, and the VM. So there's something with the interface, probably this emulation caused drop in performance. Uh, then I switched to configuration when I added the firewall. This is exactly the same. There is uh, there is bridge that in DOM0 that joining two, two VMs and whole traffic uh, just going to bridge in DOM0. And the firewall VM got PCI pass through um, Ethernet interface, which in this picture is IGB, um, IGB0. So for that configuration, the performance uh, is even lower. So 126 uh, for, for phone, uplink and downlink, and um, uh, 184 for laptop. So which gives us 50-60% 50, performance from the native pure OpenWRT situation. And finally, the, the ultimate co configuration that we would like to have and would like to make working is this configuration where directly, kind of directly, because uh, because it is still connected through DOM0, um, we connecting from, um, we, we treating um, the interface uh, in the, um, in the Wi-Fi VM. Uh, so when we're creating Wi-Fi VM, we're just saying that, uh, please create a virtual interface with the backend, which would be inside the firewall VM. And luckily, Open, OpenSense or FreeBSD uh, supports that configuration, um, but the results are um, somehow little, maybe a little bit better or like depending on the situation. For phones, seem to be a little bit better. For laptop, seem to be a little bit lower. But uh, still, this is like uh, way below expectations. And definitely, there is some place, uh, there is some stuff that have to be improved. How you can reproduce the, those results, how you can get that configuration. It's very simple. Uh, it, you just need PC Engine, it's APU2 or, or compatible platform. It's, it can be APU3 or APU4, I believe. And then you can, you need some SSD uh, for persistent configuration. And you're just using uh, IPXC boot, you're going to the, uh, you, you chain load uh, menu IPXC from from our server, boot 3 um, And then if you will pull that, there, there will be menu in which you can choose flashing tools for APU2. By the way, those flashing tools we're using during our validation, um, firmware validation, so you can use those tools easily, uh, flash ROM or whatever to deploy anything on your on your machine. Of course, if you if you trust us to that extent that this will be done, of course, this is all open. You can look what's, what's going on there. You can download and expect, uh, inspect uh, the, the components that are used here. And when you will be in the system, which will just uh, be like a minimal Linux uh, stuff, you can download uh, components from these links. The Dashado Secure Firewall is the firmware with UFI capability. Of course, this is in very, very early stage. So please, please expect that this may have some beta features or some, some experimental stuff. So not everything will work. So make sure that you can recover your system from potentially um, uh, failed situation. And uh, for operating system, which already includes the op OPN Sense um, BSD, uh, you can use BMAP tool and drop uh, the image, which is behind this link, behind the Shadow Reference OS link uh, to your device, and you can test that. Uh, with that, I would like to start to discuss some potential improvements that can happen here. Of course, the emulated device device that I mentioned is first thing to improve. Uh, when I discussed yesterday with Daniel and Rich, uh, they were surprised with the drop of the performance. So definitely I'm doing something wrong. Um, but uh, what we can do, we can take uh, host APD um, configuration from OpenWRT and include that in the Yocto. So I believe the problem here is that OpenWRT really convoluted uh, how they configure Wi-Fi. It's really convoluted. I, I looked into that and it's kind of manglet in the scripts and like detecting various features, then generating configuration based on that. 
I, I believe this this is not necessarily complication, and uh, there can be ability to create send send configure send configurations and deploy that and have meta layer in Yocto for for clearly deploying the best best uh, configuration for that. Um, yeah, for for now uh, we don't have minimal Wi-Fi VM. We try to create minimal Wi-Fi VM with with Zen related uh, features so we can create uh, required uh, backend frontend devices. Uh, but we drop it that this is still to bloated image. We're just using OpenWRT right now. When we will have everything working, then maybe we'll get back to the idea to, of having minimal Linux Wi-Fi VM. And yeah, we need we need stuff for uh, for Dashara Secure Firewall, LVFS, and FWT, FWPD updates. So you can get updates without problems from the Linux Foundation servers. And uh, there is there are already patches pending for FreeBSDs to support that feature. So sooner or later, Open OpenSense will get that. Yeah, and I'm I'm open to discuss further further ideas. I already see some comments on, on in the chat. Uh, yeah, that's 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 good idea. Uh, yeah, maybe OpenWRT doesn't have uh, Zen PV drivers enabled in the kernel build. I believe like. Um, I'm not sure about that. If I check precisely uh, OpenWRT, OpenWRT config, uh, but uh, it already has some Zen features enabled, definitely. But my my mistake, uh, which I noticed uh, um, today morning, like by the way, Rich noticed that, and importantly, uh, is is that um, I'm using emulated. I use it uh, E thousand as a model of the um, virtual interface, and that probably slows down the thing. Um, th there are also some tricks when we're dealing with communication between um, uh, between BSD systems. We should check, take care of um, checksum offloading and this kind of stuff because this is uh, this is broken. So this should be disabled in some cases. Any other suggest suggestions, questions? So I hope to move that project forward and uh, improve the performance results. And hopefully we can have like more future reach stack that is able of doing various interesting things, leveraging hypervisor features, leveraging trench boot features and connecting like uh, all the things that which are discussed uh, during this conference, like secure boot for VMs, for example, uh, DRTM uh, for, um, uh, launching the Zen um, and this kind of stuff. Maybe attestation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, m m maybe that was my my mistake that I didn't go to the developers and not try it to talk with them uh, every time uh, when I found some bug. But uh, to be honest, everyone was very busy uh, with other stuff. So I, I tried to do this myself and yeah definitely we would we need a similar approach to bsd that uh, we have same defaults sure thank you very much roger for for inviting thank you natalie so thanks for watching my presentation